Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to Football Therapy. Welcome to today's video, which is a match preview of Chelsea's epic game. Hopefully epic. Uh, a game that's of epic proportions. Hold on. A game that is epically, epically, a very important and big game for Chelsea at home in the Champions League against Bayern Munich. I'm previewing that today. It's going to be interesting. You could argue Chelsea's European campaign is already a success qualifying out of that Champions League group with a transfer ban at the expense of last season's semi-finalist Ajax. Now they're facing Bayern Munich, huge team, settled team, loads of superstar players. Really the pressure's off Chelsea, they've done their bit, they've got the money from the knockout stages, no one expects them to win. In fact, Chelsea to win at home against Bayern Munich is 16 to 5. That's over 3 to 1. Bayern Munich are like ridiculous favourites to qualify. So basically the pressure's off. Hopefully they can express themselves and just put a performance in. I'm going to be talking about Bayern's recent performance, Chelsea's recent performance, notable absentees, all that kind of jazz in today's preview. Before I get into this good gear, I want to remind you good people to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet already done so. Please do sub, hit that bell and notifications icon because it is important. Uh, like the video to help me out, why not follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on the lives? Alright, let's get into it. So like I said, Chelsea aren't really expected to do anything in this tie other than have a good crack and, you know, have some experience for the youngsters, whatever. Thomas Muller was recently interviewed and he said, you know, Chelsea are a young attacking team but we are not worried whatsoever, which hopefully could add fuel to Chelsea's fire. Um, and yeah, there's some notable absentees as well from the Chelsea side of things. So let's talk about those players first. Christian Pulisic still out with a complicated injury. I'm not entirely sure what's wrong with him. I think he did something in his ankle. I'm not sure. But yeah, he's going to be out for a little while, which is rather frustrating because he was Chelsea's most second most influential attacking player or certainly most effective had the highest xg xa behind tammy abraham so of course his absence is going to really hurt chelsea football club Agolo Kante obviously coming off last game uh, with yet another injury. He's not going to be around for this game. Um, so that's a shame. A few weeks out for him. And another frustrating situation is Callum Hudson-Odoi. He's still injured. So none of these players, Kante, Hudson-Odoi and Pulisic, attended open training at Cobham today at Chelsea Football Club. All three of them will be out. <laughs> hudson Adoy again, I'm not entirely sure what his injury was. Obviously, he was rested out for last game. To be honest, it, the narrative might be a good thing that he's not playing in this game because of the whole transfer request and, you know, all this sort of drama that happened with him. Maybe it's good that he doesn't play. I think at the moment in his Chelsea career, hudson Adoy is susceptible to feeling pressures. So I think he'd probably feel a lot of pressure in this game. So, yeah, there's that. Three key players that haven't trained and won't be featuring, you'd imagine, in this game unless there is some sort of secret trick to pull out hudson Adoy, but I seriously, seriously doubt it. Ruben Loftus-Cheek did train, though, with the team today. Um, I doubt he'll be thrown into the starting lineup against Bayern Munich in the Champions League for his first game, but it's good that he's in and around the squad. Who knows, maybe he'll play for the second leg. So let's talk about Bayern Munich first. Like I said, Muller's been coming out giving it the big one. They've got Lewandowski, who's probably the most informed centre forward in world football right now. <laughs> <laughs> Him running against Willy Caballero gives you just not happy thoughts, does it? But they, interestingly, on their 3-2 win last time out, played a 3-4-3, much like Chelsea. They were at home against Paderborn, Paderborn in the Bundesliga. I'm going to throw the match centre up in front of you now so you can have a look at who played where. They won 3-2 goals from Nat Gnabry, who's obviously a massive threat to Chelsea, and a brace from Lewandowski, that man. Philip Coutinho came on, Tolisso came on. Yeah, they had the back three of Kimmich, Alaba and Hernandez, Neuer and Goal. Oh, oh my god, they have got so much quality in that starting lineup. <laughs> but then again, they did concede two goals at home in that formation, so maybe there's a chance for Chelsea at uh, Stamford Bridge. But it's interesting that they did play that formation. Obviously, the notable threats there are the likes of the big names, essentially. Philip Coutinho would probably fancy coming on and doing something as well, even though he's not really first choice at Bayern Munich at the moment. It's an interesting one with him. Very, very talented player. Not really fitting in anywhere, though. Interesting. Much like James Rodriguez. Um, obviously, 
Each player came from La Liga, Barcelona and Real Madrid, both go on loan to Bayern Munich, but really a lot of them are sort of not are struggling. But anyway, I digress. That was Bayern Munich's last game out with their 3-2 win. So, you know, they're conceding goals, but they're top of the Bundesliga and they're Bayern Munich. You don't really need to say any more about them other than we know what serious, serious threat they uh, can bring. Right, let's pop the uh, Chelsea match center up now for Chelsea's 2-1 win against Tottenham Hotspur. Of course, Chelsea also deployed a 3-4 free in that game in many ways Tottenham were toothless Chelsea should have been home and dry you know by I don't know with a big portion of the match left in that game but they made it difficult for themselves but it is London derby form goes out the window all bets are off etc etc great result for Chelsea but it does pose the question what is Frank Lampard going to do for this game against Bayern Munich? Now Lampard often uses the 3-4-3 free free to either catch people out or match a 3-4-3 free free formation. Obviously Chelsea went away to Molyneux to play against Wolves with that formation for the first time and they put five past Wolverhampton Wanderers. And also, you know, he did it against Tottenham the first time against Jose Mourinho's Tottenham and they played a back four system and they actually switched to the back three to adapt and match up against Chelsea. Often that's the way, remember Antonio Conte's Chelsea, people try to counter that with their own back three system. So what's Lampard going to do? Are they going to keep to this shape? He said they'd been training it for a few days. He could, in theory, use the same players and just keep training the same system, running the same drills, thinking, you know, we might be coming up against another back three midweek. That might make sense because it's probably going to be the midfield of Jorginho and Kovacic again if they feel rested enough to go again. It's a quick turnover, of course, in a massive game, but who knows, maybe they can do it. Mason Mount did look very, very good when he played against Tottenham, so he could play on the wing. I imagine Willian will come in for Ross Barkley, although Ross Barkley also did play very well in the London derby. The big question will be who's going to be in goal, but to be honest, it's not really a big question anymore. If Frank Lampard's going to play Caballero in goal against Tottenham in a six-pointer London derby, he's going to play him in every kind of match. So you'd think Willie Caballero would be in goal for this game. Reese James at right back. And if it is a wing back system, then Marcus Alonso again, who knows? But maybe if it is a back four, it will be Cesar Azpilicueta. I have a feeling Chelsea might be a little bit more inclined to sit deep, so there is a very strong chance Chelsea might play a back four system, maybe a 4-2-3-1 that really turns into a 4-5-1 out of possession, or a 4-4-2 with pressing. Maybe, maybe if he starts Tammy Abraham over Olivier Giroud, they'll employ that sort of Lampard tactic of playing a 4-4-2 out of possession where Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham, uh, Tammy Abraham run around pressing together. Who knows? The thing is Giroud apparently said to Lampard, look, I can't start uh, before the Tottenham game because he wasn't match fit. And obviously he played like, what, 70 minutes against Tottenham. Can he play a couple of days later in a Champions League match? I don't know. I mean, we're all hoping it's not Michy Bashrai just because of his current form. I imagine it's going to be Tammy Abraham and then Giroud will be the option off the bench to come on and change the game personally and I think that's not because of a I think that's just down to fatigue because Giroud's 33 he wasn't really match fit up until the uh, London derby and he's just played a game a couple of days ago where he ran his socks off so personally I think Tammy Abraham will start and Giroud will offer an option off the bench who knows, maybe even Ruben Loftus-Cheek could be an option off the bench. So like I said, Chelsea is 16-5 to to win this game. The bookies aren't giving a Chelsea, Chelsea a snowball's chance in hell in this game. Although I'm a Chelsea fan and of course I have to be optimistic. I think maybe it just scrape a win or a score draw. Say maybe two all at home at Stamford Bridge. But remember, Chelsea are a different animal away from home, so maybe they go away to the Allianz Arena, the shackles are off, the pressures are off, they're expressing themselves, they've got good memories of playing away in Munich, maybe they can just do something, you know, like that amazing performance away at Ajax, maybe they can sort of summon that spirit again. But if they get like a score draw or a low a low scoring draw at home at Stamford Bridge, I think they can express themselves a little bit more away from home. And to be honest, as long as they don't get slapped about 7-2 at home, <laughs> 
like Tottenham Hotspur, it will be an improvement. And like I said at the beginning of the video, to a degree, Frank Lampard has already done his job in this European campaign, qualifying out of the group at the expense of Ajax uh, with what he had to work with. So that's pretty good. As long as Chelsea just learn from this fixture, express themselves, personally, I think everything will be fine. So what does everyone else think? I'm keen to get people's <laughs> thoughts and uh, opinions on this game. Get down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this fixture. Um, I want to get some score predictions from you guys. So I'm going to say 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I'm going with head and not heart here. Although Bayern Munich will fancy coming to Chelsea and giving them a thumping, I reckon. But I don't think that's going to necessarily be the case. I think Chelsea can rally. I think there can be some spirit. I don't think they'll like smash up Bayern Munich. But I think they can do something. So I'm saying 2-2. Two, two. Let me know your score predictions in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, this match preview of me talking about the tactics of Chelsea versus Bayern Munich, I'd urge you and request for you to like the video and subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new, man. Join the GOAT gang. Talk about football. Talk about Chelsea. It's a load of fun. Why not also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.